welcome you to our worship service this morning from Gordon Street Christian Church. We hope all of you are doing well, and we are grateful that you are joining us in worship in the places where you are. It is good for us to join our hearts and minds together in thanksgiving and worship of the God who has been so good to us. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship is from the 107th Psalm, verse 1. Oath, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our hymn of praise is Come Christians Join to Sing. for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer. Lord, your mercy is extended beyond what we deserve. In spite of our sins, you continue to love us. When we suffer from the consequences of our deeds, you seek to restore us. As we worship today, help us see your love and mercy at work all around us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. 
Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, enslaved, and free. But Christ is all and in all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we are gathered together in mind and in spirit, we thank you for the spirit that binds us together, for your Holy Spirit that has been with us among us and within us. We thank you for your goodness toward all of us. We look around, we see how you have blessed us again and again. You have provided a beautiful world in which for us to live. We, you have given life and breath to every living thing that breathes. You have blessed us with all that we need and more. You've surrounded us with your love and goodness. You have sent us your son Jesus to teach us your ways and to show us your ways by his own example. Lord, we know that in spite of all the goodness and love that you have given to us, we often go astray, we sin against you, and we face the consequences of our sins and sometimes wonder, well, why are these things happening? We pray this day that you forgive us of our sins, that you strengthen us against temptation, that you will help us to walk in pathways that are good and right in your sight. In times when we are facing the consequences of our sins, we ask that you give us strength to endure and your mercy that will restore us to your presence, to your love, in, in ways that are amazing even to us. We pray, Father, this day for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who have lost loved ones, those who are expecting surgery, those who are recovering from surgery. May your presence be with all of them so that they will know joy that no circumstance can take from them. May your healing touch be upon them that their lives will become whole and that they will know the goodness of your great power. Lord, may your love so touch them and all of us that we will be transformed so that we will become instruments through which your love will be shared with others. Father, we pray this day for your church in this place and in every place where your name is glorified. Help us that we might be faithful in sharing your love and the good news of your salvation with all people. May hearts everywhere be prepared to receive that word. May they look unto you and find life and blessing beyond measure. We pray for our nation and all nations that they might walk in pathways of righteousness and peace, 
guide our leaders and may they guide us. May we be receptive to that guidance so that we may move forward in this world in a way that will be pleasing unto you. We pray that you search all of our hearts and minds and fulfill our deepest needs in accordance with your will. Help us that our minds and hearts will be open to the hearing and understanding of your word. Guide us that we might walk with you day by day. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our scripture text this morning is again from Hosea, the prophet from the Old Testament. It is the 11th chapter, beginning in the first verse and going through the 11th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the balls and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priest and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. Last week, our text was from Hosea, and we talked about the amazing love of God shown in this uh, prophecy. There are numerous places in in the Old Testament that uh, show us how great God's love is, and Hosea is just one of them, but it is one that shows his love in astounding measure. This passage that I have just read for you from Hosea is a passage that lets us know something of the nature of God, what God is really like. And it is one that 
is so touching so far as showing us the love and compassion of God. A love so strong that when he sees his children suffering, he himself suffers. His heart recoils within him. It hurts even God to see us suffer. In spite of the fact that our suffering we have brought on ourselves. We talked about this last week, how uh, we are so often intent on turning away from God, intent on doing that which God did warned us against doing, intent on sin. And God is merciful toward us so that we do not always uh, reap the consequences of our deeds. But after a while, his mercy realizes that we're not coming back to him unless there is some correction, unless there is some way that we are made aware of our deeds being wrong. And so the time comes when God withdraws his uh, restraining hand so that we face the full consequences of our deeds. That is what is called judgment. It is mentioned in the epistle to the Romans by Paul how God's judgment is shown to us by him uh, giving us up to the sins that we commit. So it was in the days of Israel God had loved them with an everlasting love. He had blessed them with blessings beyond measure. He had called them as his own children and shown them favor unlike anyone else in all the world had seen at that time. The passage begins, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. And the people that Hosea was giving this prophecy to knew what he was talking about because in their history God had loved them. They had been slaves down in Egypt when they were oppressed and, and made to go into forced labor when their labor was not for their good but for the good of their oppressors. God looked down upon them and had mercy upon them. And he came and delivered them. He carried them through the Red Sea. He brought them on eagles' wings through the wilderness and to the promised land. God had called his children out of Egypt. And he blessed them all along the way. But here in this prophecy, God says to the people, the more I blessed you, the more you went away from me. And you kept sacrificing to false idols and gods and offering uh, incense to false gods. He said, but you just didn't see, you didn't understand that it was I who was giving you the blessings that you were enjoying. You were looking upon my love and gracious deeds, my wonderful gifts to you and blessings, and yet you could not see the fact that it was I giving them to you. You did not know that I healed you. I led them with cords of human kindness, bands of love. I was like to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. When they were hungry, he gave them manna in the wilderness. When they were thirsty, he gave them water from the rock. When they went into the promised land, he gave them abundance of food, a land flowing with milk and honey. And yet, in spite of all the evidence around them, they went after false gods. They could not see the truth of God's love and care for them, that the true God was the one giving them all these blessings. It reminds us of today when facts are laid before people, facts that are irrefutable, that are backed up again and again and again, and people will not see them and people will not believe them. We look around, we see a world created beautifully. 
We look into the heavens and see the stars and the magnificence of this creation uh, that in which we live. And there are people who say there is no God. No one created all these things. It just happened. And it's all out there for us to see and we won't believe it. So it was with Israel. God loved them, God blessed them, God spoke to them, he sent prophets to them, and they still would not listen, they would not believe. And so God was becoming very upset with them. He was going to allow them to face the consequences of the things that they had done. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. The time had come. It had come when they had to face the consequences of their actions. As it comes to all of us, if we persist in sin, if we persist in doing what is wrong, if we persist in showing uh, hatred toward others, if we persist in treating others unjustly, sooner or later the consequences of that will come upon us. And the consequences are dire. It would bring destruction and death upon Israel. And yet, when God saw all those horrible things happening to them, it was like a parent seeing their children suffering uh, for deeds that they had done. And, And that happens frequently. Parents love their children. They do all that they can for them, but sometimes the children go astray. They do that which they should not do. They get into things where they should not go. And the children end up suffering the consequences, and the parents, as long as they can, often will try to keep them from facing those consequences. But the time comes when nothing can be done, when the consequences come anyway. And they suffer. And the parents suffer, seeing their children suffer. You know, some people think that God cannot suffer. I don't know why they think that, but that has been a a belief down through the ages that God cannot really suffer. He is almighty and and does not suffer because all power is in his hands. But the scripture does not teach that. This passage that we read teaches us that as God was looking upon the condition of Israel, looking upon their suffering because of their own sins, they justly deserved it. God saw it and was grieved to his very heart. He was suffering grief because of what was happening to his beloved children. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return them to their homes, 
says the Lord. It grieved him the suffering his people were enduring, even though they deserved it. It grieved him to his very heart. His heart recoiled within him, he said, and he would have mercy. The suffering of his people was great. There was death and destruction, but he would have mercy. He would show his love and compassion. Death and destruction would not have the last word. He would restore his people. They would recognize their sin. They would turn their face back to the Lord who had roared like a lion. And they would come in repentance. They would come trembling, the scripture says, back to him. And he says, I will have mercy and I will return them to their homes. What tender love of God is shown toward his people in this passage. A tender love like a parent bringing up a little child to his cheeks. Loving that little child, feeding that little child, taking care of that little child when they could not care for themselves. Tender love and mercy. It is that same tender love and mercy that is shown to all of us by our God. And we have seen it even more perfectly in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who suffered for us because of us. We have seen it in that he saw our sins and we directed our anger, our hatred toward him, our violence toward him, and he suffered mightily. And yet, in spite of that, he could not bear to see us suffer. He would not strike out against us and destroy us. Instead, he said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. He said this to his disciples when they advocated destroying a village that had rejected Jesus. He said, the Son of Man came to save life, not to destroy it. We see that love in Jesus our Lord who came back to us after we had done horrible things to him with forgiveness and love and acceptance, with arms stretched out welcoming us back home with him again, back into his presence, back into his favor. Today we live in a world that is reaping the things that we have sown. We live in a world where climate is becoming more and more fierce because of the things that we have done. We live in a world where hatred is strong and people are suffering under it. We live in a world where we are facing hunger and disasters here and there because of the ways that we have lived. In a sense, we can call it judgment from God because it was built into creation that actions have consequences. And God has withheld many of those consequences in his mercy but when we persist and persist and refuse to turn, the consequences come upon us heavily. And the consequences can be deadly. But even so, we are told in the scripture that God who created all things loves us. It hurts him to see us suffering. And the last word will not be destruction and death. But the last word from our God 
is love, compassion, forgiveness, and restoration. You and I have been blessed to have been brought up in the knowledge of our loving and powerful God. May we take heed to his instruction. May we turn away from sin so that its consequences will not come upon us because they surely will if we persist in sin. May we turn to the one who loves us, who suffers when we suffer, who offers to us life and blessing. May we turn to him and follow his teaching and find blessing beyond measure. Thanks be to God for his wonderful love and compassion and for his power to save and restore. When we come to the table of the Lord, again we celebrate the love of God shown to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this table, this bread represents his body. This cup represents his blood that was given for us, shed for us. At this table, all are welcomed because Christ has called all to come unto him to receive forgiveness, to receive life, to be welcomed as part of his own family, welcomed at his family table. At this table, we not only remember his sacrifice with this bread and this cup, but give thanks for the living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead and who came back to us with these gifts of life and forgiveness and love. As we partake, may we remember that we did not earn a spot at this table, 
but be grateful that our Lord's love has included us anyway. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather at this table, we lift our hearts to you with thanksgiving. You suffered so much for our sakes, and yet you loved us anyway. As we partake of this bread and this cup, we ask that you will strengthen us in your service. May your love so transform us that we will share your love with others around us in every place that we go. We pray that we will be forgiven as you have forgiven us so many times in the past. We pray that you will strengthen us against temptation that we might serve you faithfully. May we become ambassadors for you those through whom your love and light is shown to others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Take you this and remember that Christ died for you. Remember him in all his love and goodness. And in a like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, we have not earned our place here at your table, but you welcomed us anyway. We have done nothing to deserve the love you have shown us, yet you loved us anyway. May your love bless us as it has so often in the past. May we yield ourselves to your love so that it might grow within us and be spread from us to others. Help us to become all you want us to be. And we thank you for all your blessings. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.